Hello and welcome to the Ireland on the Fly podcast about the people and places of fly fishing in Ireland. It's January 2023 and a happy new year to all our listeners and to those of you especially who have been touched with ideas, suggestions and for the competition as well. We'll be running a lot more comps with prizes of books, flies and fly boxes throughout the year so stay tuned for that. And Tom, before we get into the episode, we better announce the winner of Mark Wormo's book, The Catch, Fishing for Ted Hughes. Yes, Dara. And the lucky winner was Kevin Tipper from Lucan. So congrats to Kevin, and we'll be in contact shortly to get your details. Back to this week's episode, and we're going to be getting an update from Shane Gallagher of the Drowse Fishery shortly to let us know how opening day went for them. But Tom, I want to ask you, what's your fly fishing plans for 2023? Are you one of those actually that, you know, that Christmas period, New Year period, sit back, get the notebook out. What did I achieve this year? How many marathons am I going to run next year? How many mountains am I going to climb? That kind of stuff like well, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't go so far as to say right and down, but I, th- I think I'm guilty of, and I, of something that a lot of anglers are guilty of, and that is, I'm going to fish more this year. Definitely, that's yes. it. Now, I didn't fish enough last year, and I'm going to fish more. And we all tend to say that, but, but I'm going to say it. I'm going to fish more this year. Actually, can I ask you right? And this is, I'm asking for listeners. What is the secret to this? How does one make more time to get out and fish more? Right. Answers on a postcard, thing. please. Okay, answers on it's our next competition. <laughs> one way, and this is a little side thing of competition fishing. Competition fishing is great in that, you know, if you go and fish in a competition, you actually have to go and fish. You know, you get the dates and they're, oh my God, you know, I've just seen it there now, May the 27th. Um, the national is on. I'm going to be fishing that day. So, you know, with that or, or other events, you know, and even small club competitions or whatever, you get out. Now, that said, and we've been through this before, competition fishing isn't everybody's uh, cup of tea. So I understand that. So I think the other thing is, and I find it here, if I go fishing on my own, and part of the problem with me is I'm right beside the lake. If I go fishing on my own, I won't last a full day. I very rarely do a full day. But if you get a cohort of fishing pals and make a day with somebody to go fishing for a day, then you've got to stick to it. I think that's really important. So if you're in a club, which is a good way, and making making that effort to fish with somebody else, because I find here, if I arrange to fish with somebody, that's it. I'll do it for the day. And then you'll enjoy it. Whereas if I'm out on my own, do you know what? go home early or whatever, maybe, maybe call it off. It's a good point, actually. And it's similar to kind of training um, for sports. They always have a training partner. Um, I'm supposed to be running a bloody marathon in April. Uh, more oh, that, are you? More than that and on. Yeah. All oh, right. But, um, and Mir, how, how the, how's the training going? Well, I did my back in the week before Christmas, so uh, not very well. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's not great. No. That's, I, you can't run at the moment, can you? I can't do anything. Uh, I do take oh, one, right. though, like, um, and my, yeah, like, just old age. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm creaking, breaking down at this stage. Actually, for all of us, but running is not good for it. So yeah, I'm, no. having sec- I'm having second thoughts about the marathon, to be honest. <laughs> but it is one of those I've always. So one half of me would love to do it, right? And then the other half of me is thinking it goes back to the fish. <laughs> like, how much more time have I got? Like, you know, I think yeah, sometimes actually that's that's going to take a lot of time up. Yeah, you're talking three, four days a week, like yeah. Um, like, in fairness, my fishing, right, is, and to bring it back to fishing, sorry for boring everyone about my aching back and my my running plans, um, is, I find it is, if I can book in, like, once a month, like, trips, you know, that will kind of, you know, right, I've something there, it's always booked in, and I have something to look forward to. Um, and in fairness, like, because we're look, we're talking hopefully end of May, aren't we? Yeah. Um, getting out into Carb. Um, yeah, yeah. We have a day booked, I have it booked in. Exactly. So it's kind of like I've yeah. put it in there. So, you know, work has actually, to stop. Actually, that's the reason why I did that as well. I just yeah. said, there's okay. the day. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. we've tried to, we were meant to have a day last year and the year before, and it never materialized. Yeah. So what we actually, what what, what I did known on that, is that there, there's the date. That's the date now. Yeah, but that's, and that's the way, that's exactly it. Like, so I think if anybody's listening, you're looking to get out. Just book it in. Just book it. Yeah. That was the other thing I used to do as well, especially when I was writing the book. Pay for it. <laughs> because <laughs> if you paid for it in yeah. advance, you're not going to book out, you know, back out. 
you know yeah. you're just gonna go oh, I'm paid it geez like i have to go now like you see you know? yeah you do actually it's like i said that to you before I, and god we're digressing i used to be season ticket holder with connaught right okay yes, yes. all right uh up until just pre-pandemic and i was season ticket holder for about five or six seasons i hardly ever missed a game yeah. and the one year i stopped i think i went to one game and i hardly go at all now but when you have it it's Kind of like the same principle, you know, I have it there. God, I better use it. I better go, yeah, you know? Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Exactly. So it's, so I'm hoping, look, it's, and, and I find as well as it's, it's the, the company as well. I think that's the other thing you said is once, if you're going with people, you're more likely to kind of, to make the effort. And it's the camaraderie is part of it. Like, you know, so yeah. it's, you know, and, and the bucket list, I say to people, even mark off one or two, is there somewhere you've always wanted to try it? You know, why not? Just pick up the phone, book a guide. Get, yep. get it in the diary and see if there's any mates around that want to come. Um, so definitely well worth trying. Um, but we'll keep people posted. I'll keep people posted on my back injury. I'm sure you'd be fascinated to hear. <laughs> it's, it's kind of like side, side of it. You know, side, <laughs> side show. <laughs> well, look, we'll get back to opening day on the Drows now uh, with Shane Gallagher. And he uh, gave us an update on how things went. Yeah, Dara, um, Happy New Year. Congratulations or on, on, on the podcast. Um, it's I think it's become a staple of uh, Anglin in Ireland, especially in the absence of any Anglin magazine out, you know, in Ireland. And um, the last time I was listening to you, I was nailing on some wire down the river just before opening day, uh, getting pelted with hailstones, listening about Ted Hughes. So it was very interesting. And, uh, you know, congratulations to yourself and Tom. Oh, I think it's uh, you're doing a great job. Thanks. Actually, just just on that, isn't it? It says something about like where you said in the absence of a magazine, it's all bloody podcasts these days. Yeah. <laughs> Well, at least you can multitask. You can listen to you guys and uh, sure. get on with your work at the same time, you know? It was very hard to staple a fence when you were reading Trout and Salmon. It's, it's ne- nearly impossible. <laughs> nearly impossible. Actually, Shay, any, any particular favourite episodes? Just, <laughs> just... Uh, to be honest, just a whole range of them. Like uh, the, the book club now and uh, the thing about uh, Kingsman Moor, um, there's a bit, of, a bit of a connection, Kingsman Moor, with a fish here and on, on Melvin. Mm. So... I thought that was very interesting. So, but I find them all very interesting because you're getting a whole range of your, you know, hearing about people's stories that, uh, you know, even though the Anglin community in Ireland is quite small, uh, you don't really get a chance to uh, talk to other people a lot. Like there's no national uh, inland angling forum anymore and things like that. So your, your podcast is uh, just a great way to, to hear about other people's experiences. Yeah, thanks a minute. And you know what actually is I love is, is I think Tom, you were saying that as well as it's it's the amount of people, character stories, mm. subject matter. Like people might think, oh, fly fishing in Ireland. Are you going to run out of topics? Believe me, anybody who's listening, we've got like a spreadsheet <laughs> of about five years worth at this stage. We do. Yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. It really is. But come here, listen, let's get back to topic. Um <laughs> It's, uh, we're just recording this. It is the, what day are we, Tom? It's the fourth, fourth Wednesday the 4th. So you, yeah. you've, opening day was a couple of days ago. Uh, Shane, what were the conditions like many anglers out? Yeah, opening day on Sunday, conditions were good. Uh, it was a cold, dry day, nice, nice fishing day. We had about 80 anglers out. Um, fishing, uh, there wasn't a lot of fresh fish seen. I think there was maybe uh, reports of one fresh fish seen in the black water. Uh, it was probably noticeable that there wasn't the same volume of uh, of kelts, uh, you know, caught this opening day. Um, and I think that really reflects probably a poor grills run, probably the proportion of kelts that, you know, were visible or bigger sort of spring kelts. So I think that, you know, the, the grills run last year was poor and, and that's probably reflected in what we're seeing now with uh, probably spawning this uh, this winter and, and the kelts um, that have been caught since opening day. How does that, what does that mean for the kind of the runs that are to come? Like, where, does it flip to the spring run? How is, can you give me any insights into that or? Yeah, I, I suppose what we're seeing is the, like last year, the, the spring run was quite consistent. Um, uh, just looking at the, um, the the 2021 stats that were published late uh, last year, uh, I think the, the spring, the numbers of springers caught in 2021 was up by about 150%, which was a huge increase in the previous year. Now there was restrictions in place. I think the five kilometer, uh, you know, travel limit was in place up until maybe mid-April. And then there was further county restrictions on on past that. But, you know, spring fish, spring fish seems to be holding up well. <clears throat> but last year uh, with us in particular, uh, the grilts run was really poor. And the, the, the size of fish was small. 
and conditions were poor as well because water levels really tapered off from maybe mid-April on and we didn't get any water until until the season was over, you know? Yeah, that's very interesting, uh, Shane. All right. There seems to have been, I almost say, a return to the smaller grills throughout the country. Yeah. There were, yeah. What, what, what was the average size you were seeing of the ones you were catching? We were seeing grills, you know, two and a half, three pounds. Yeah. Three pound grills would have probably been a, a decent size one last year. And how does that compare to previous years, just to give us an, a comparison? Probably one of the, bit, the best grills runs that I've seen was in 2020. And the number, both the number of grills and the average size, the condition of the fish was, was superb. So in, in the space of, uh, of, of two years, you know, it was a huge decline in, in numbers of fish. Now, the, the reasons for that, uh, you know, um, your guess is as good as mine, really. It's, it's interesting that because I remember in 2020 when that happened, because that, like you're telling of, of just the droughts, but I think that was indicative of throughout the country. that The, grill, the size of the grills had gone up again. I think we were all sort of saying, oh, yeah, they're back to normal now. And we're also saying, and they'll stay at that size now. <laughs> and they, they yeah. you know, they haven't, you know. I think we were hoping that it was the beginning of a trend that we were seeing, you know, mm. a return to grills uh, numbers. But, uh, and, and, you know, last year was, was an average enough year. But, uh, or, or sorry, uh, uh, t- t- 2021 then was an average enough year. But last year, 2022 was, was, was very poor. When you said there, 2021 saw record number of spring fish, yeah? I just thought there, because it's all going around in my head, but sure, that was when we had, as you said, restrictions. Yeah, on. Yeah. So would you have said, like, would the angling pressure have been less then during that record cat return? It, it certainly would have been, yeah. 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 That's yeah. That, So the potential was there, let's say, if had 2021, had we not seen a pandemic, that you could have seen far greater returns of spring salmon, much more than 150% you've said. Possibly, but then uh, if you look back, say, when the records began, the, the, you know, the, the tagging scheme started in 2001. And we had double the amount of anglers. And I think in 20, sorry, sorry, in 2001, and we had 26,000 fish reported. And in 20 years later, in 2021, with less than half the amount of anglers, there was, what, 24 and a half thousand. Yeah, that's true. In fact, I've, I've probably just, there's a whole string of arguments you could say there for, you know, less angling pressure, et cetera. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. So, but still interesting nonetheless, though. But is the flip side of it that we're thinking the spring fishing now is kind of improving in the last few years? It, it may not be improving, but it's certainly holding its own. It's not decreasing um, at the same level as we've seen declines in in, in grills. But what we're, what we're seeing in, in the grills run is, is a huge variation from one year to the next. And it would be really interesting to maybe get to the bottom of that and understand what's happening, why there, there is such variation from one season to the next. Whereas if we look, going back 20 years, the, the multi-sea winter fish, the, the, the levels are, you know, they're, they're fairly constant, fairly steady. There's, there's no major fluctuations. It is really a story of fluctuations, though, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Like it, it really it, is. If you look, uh, you know, at the records going back from one season to the next, there's, there's wild swings, you know, there's a huge decrease and then there's a huge upsurge. When we were talking to you last year, how you mentioned that in the November 1978 issue, Trout and Salmon, that there was a call for um, a ban on all types of salmon eating. And I remember, I, I remember, because like we were thinking, you're looking back there, that was 44 years ago. And I, I had to ask you, did, did they actually mean rod and line as well? <laughs> Said yes. And you, you had the piece there. Yeah, th- th- that's right, uh, Tom. So um, th- like there, there was a call in uh, 1978 at the end of that season for a complete cessation of, uh, of all exploitation of salmon in Ireland, both by net and rod and line. For to, to enable the stocks to recover, and then like you know, shortly after that, you have sort of a, a boom time, maybe in the in the early eighties of, of, of great runs, you know. So, um, but but that was that, that was the thinking at the time. Just uh, out of interest, sir, last year, where was the first salmon caught? On the, the first salmon last year was caught on the thirteenth of January, and yeah, that was kind of earlier than previous years, wasn't well, it? Yeah, the, the the general trend is that um, the the the, the Probably the, the number of uh, spring fish in, in the water in early January, um, is, you know, the, the numbers just aren't what they used to be. So the the, the date of when the first salmon has landed is, is getting later and later, like we've had years where it's gone into February, you know, which would have been unprecedented uh, beforehand. But really, like, I suppose it might have been exceptional for um, 
the, you know, for the expectation for a fish to be landed on opening day. If, if you look at any wild salmon fisheries in Ireland or even in Scotland, the amount of uh, wild salmon fisheries that land uh, salmon on opening day, you, you could probably count them, it's less than a handful really, you know. It, a lot of the time now, isn't it? It's more the anglers are coming out to mark the occasion. Yeah. You know, just absolutely. the season's open. Yeah. Great to be there. You know, cast the yeah. line out, dust the cobwebs down. You're going in no broader than expectation. Yeah. There, there probably is uh, less and less expectation of, of catching fish, but people like to get out and meet up with people again. And, you know, there's a bit of cabin fever sets in over the Christmas period. So, you know, we, we, we the people maybe that would turn out on opening day and we might not see again until maybe Easter. So, you know, and sometimes no, there, there would be, you know, the, the hardy regulars that would be going out every weekend and things like that. But, you know, um, people like to mark the occasion, get a, you know, start the day or, or start the new year on, you know, with, 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 uh, with, with a cast and uh, they've been doing it for years and they like to continue to do it. Yeah, actually, it's very similar here on our opening day. Um uh, shame because we might go out the 15th uh, February have a big fry up on the island a lot of the guys wouldn't be out for another month afterwards so you yeah. know, I really see what's happening there actually back to that though just wondering what's been your record opening day uh, probably the best opening day that I remember is about three fish but I know wow. like my, my own father would have caught the first salmon of the year before he took over the fishery twice and I think on one day there was maybe seven seven springers caught on, on an opening day when there would have been, you know, m- m- many less people fishing, probably like that. Yeah. Wow. So basically what you're seeing is regardless, regardless of the number of spring fish, is that, that they're running that bit later. Would that, that be fair to say? Absolutely, Tom. Yeah. <clears throat> and I, I think it's, it's maybe not just the, the early spring fish, but if you look at the back end run, let's say, you know, uh, you know September, the autumn run, the, the run times have shifted there as well. So there, there's, there's a shift. I, I think myself, there's, you know, it's maybe reflected on in, in uh, changes at sea or changes in temperature. I was listening on the radio this morning about uh, record temperatures in Europe of 20 degrees, even in, you know, in Central and Eastern Europe and places like Poland, that they, they should have be covered in snow at the moment. And uh, people are going around in T-shirts. So there's there, there's changes, you know, in, in climate. And I think that's been reflected in, in changes in run times of salmon. I'm not a climate change denier. I'm all for it. <laughs> there's, <laughs> but there's a lot to- <laughs> you dropped your tin hat there. there. <laughs> I have to say, though, you know, <laughs> you can be on the riverbank in January and you're not freezing your nuts off. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. That's right. Yeah, but like even even so far this year, we've had um, like today, it's about 12 degrees. And maybe two days ago, uh, you know, there, there was a heavy frost. There was some, some accidents on, on the roads around here and raw eyes were freezing. So you know from day to day there's a huge yeah. variation even at this time of year yeah no that in fairness that's a fair point like it's yeah you'll get one day like you said it's t-shirt weather and then the, the next day it's like you said it's you know down to freezing like so it is uh it hasn't gone away completely like and neither of the fish so we're hoping the next few weeks <laughs> shane we'll we'll hear um we'll hear the jungle drums beating again well yeah we we, we would certainly be hopeful um yeah we, we'd like to see it maybe uh, ca- ca- caught it uh, maybe as quickly as last year if, if not sooner because conditions remain f- favourable brilliant well look if anybody's looking to itching to get out they know where to go <laughs> absolutely yeah we're, we're, we're here and we're waiting great well Shane listen we'll, we'll touch base with you again during the year and um, yeah fingers crossed for, for news from the, the first hammer from the drows for the season hopefully as well thanks a for joining absolutely. us and, uh, I, I wish your, uh, yourself Dara and, and Tom a good season and to, to all the listeners um, I hope uh, everybody's a good season and better than last year in tight lines our thanks to Shane Gallagher for joining us on the show. And don't forget to rate, review and follow the Ireland on the Fly podcast on Apple, Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts from. Plus, you can keep up to date on IrelandOnTheFly.com as well as on Instagram. And myself and Tom will be back with another episode about the people and places of fly fishing in Ireland. <laughs>